thank you very much for being all here. Uh, it is my pleasure to welcome you all. And I'm very pleased to, to kick uh, start uh, the, um, this meeting uh, as uh, the RDRM IO program, um, especially the, the, the component on building resilience and improving institutional capacity in the Indian Ocean Island states for disaster risk reduction. Before we start the meeting, please note that uh, there is interpretation, as you can see uh, in your bottom screen under the globe image. You can uh, use this uh, function just in uh, both English and French. You can change the language um, at any, any time. And now let me just pass uh, the word to our moderator for today's session, who is uh, Mrs. Amelie Yan uh, Yanguif who is the Disaster Risk Reduction and Recovery Advisor in the Resident Coordinator's Office in Madagascar. Amelie, the floor is yours. Uh, yeah, good morning. Many thanks, uh, Roberto, for passing the mic on to me. Uh, really, um, really pleased to be from Madagascar with all of you in the Indian Ocean today launching the project component, building resilience and improving institutional capacity in Indian Ocean Island states for disaster risk reduction that is implemented by UNGRR. This component is part of the program, resilience building and disaster response management in the Indian Ocean. The, this project, we're going to refer to it through its um, abbreviation, RDRMIO. And um, I, I would like to ask Mr. Amjad Abashar, Chief of the UNDRR Regional Office for Africa, to give us his introductory remarks for this event today, this uh, special kickoff meeting of this component on resilience building. Thank you. Dear Amjad, thank you for your remarks. Thank you very much. I hope you can hear me. Thank you, Emily, for this uh, kind introduction. And I just wanted to uh, welcome everybody and say a good morning to all. And uh, I'm really, really pleased to, to be here. I just wanted to begin also by uh, welcoming all the uh, member states who are present. And I very much look forward to supporting your efforts and working together in an equal partnership. I would like to also uh, maybe welcome my fellow uh, speakers or and, and, and close partners, uh, uh, Mr. Massimiliano Messi, who is the team leader EU delegation in Mauritius, and uh, Gina Bon, Miss Gina Bon, who I've known for a number of years, who is the project manager for the Indian Ocean Commission, and I understand is leading the implementation of uh, most of the disaster risk reduction programs at the uh, Indian Ocean Commission. Um, really, um, I wanted to be with you here today to really launch, uh, formally launch this program uh, that we call uh, Building Resilience and Improving Institutional Capacity in the Indian Ocean Island States for Disaster Risk Reduction. Uh, this program will be carried out over the coming four years. And uh, it's also uh, important to note that it's actually part of a broader initiative uh, entitled Resilience Building and Disaster Response Management in the Indian Ocean, RDRMIO for short. <laughs> it's generously funded by the EU in partnership with the Indian Ocean uh, Commission, and it will be implemented in partnership also with the IOC and uh, PIRIO, which is the Indian Ocean Regional Intervention Pla Platform, as well as my office, uh, UNDRR. So obviously it's evident um, if you've been around for the last couple of months that the Indian Ocean states uh, island, uh, the Indian Ocean island states are particularly exposed to disaster risks and the adverse impacts of climate change. The current cyclone season, which saw at least three major tropical storms and cyclones, I recall Anna, Batsiraya and Imnati, within a short period of time, they provide yet another example of the negative impacts that disasters can have on countries. They also illustrate the increasing frequency we are witnessing in the region when it comes to cyclones and tropical storms. Uh, but cyclones are, are not the only, uh, uh, it's actually one of many hazards to which the Indian Ocean Island states are exposed to. You know, indeed there are other hydrometeorological hazards, notably floods and droughts, 
They also affect the countries, uh, most notably uh, we, um, the, the situation in Madagascar has been particularly uh, illustrative of the seriousness of how drought can strike um, the Indian Ocean uh, states. So the risks of geophysical events such as tsunamis and earthquakes, as well as biological disasters such as COVID, and technological hazards uh, such as oil spills, which more research had experienced in the uh, previous years. These hazards together contribute to the systemic nature uh, or call upon us to address the systemic nature of risk to ensure that uh, the cascading effects of disasters are managed properly. And at the same time, uh, these hazards, they place additional burdens on national institutions and vulnerable communities. Certainly, of course, they undermine our efforts to achieve sustainable development uh, and the goals of the sustainable uh, of the SDGs. So in the context, uh, in this context, the objective of the Resilience Building and Disaster Respon Response Management IO program is all the more relevant and critical as it aims to reduce uh, disaster and climate related losses in human, economic, social, physical and environmental assets in the four island states that we wish to, that we look forward to working with, namely, of course, Comoros, Madagascar, Mauritius and Seychelles. So in doing so, the program will aim to build resilience and capacities of authorities, and in particular in areas such as risk knowledge, early warning system, and DR financing and economics. So in the course of this event, uh, I'm, I'm hoping that we'll hear more from member states about the progress they have made towards the implementation of the Sendai framework for disaster risk reduction. But I must also pause and recognize that there have been efforts that have been already made, undertaken in the region towards achieving uh, target E, for example, which is about having national and local disaster risk reduction strategies. Uh, now we know disaster risk reduction strategies are important to achieve the Sendai framework targets because they allow countries to set a vision, strategic objectives, and to prioritize key actions aimed at strengthening the resilience of communities and societies. So almost all of the countries uh, that we're dealing with today have validated and are implementing a national disaster risk reduction strategy that is aligned to the Sendai framework. So I think that's worthy of praise. Three, three of those strategies, uh, Madagascar, Mauritius, and Seychelles have all been validated. And I know that Comoros is also making great progress to develop a national strategy for disaster risk reduction with support from our Arab states office uh, in Cairo. So this project will build on such existing DRR initiatives, such as the strategies that are being undertaken. And, and I'm pleased that to be supporting this program and to be working closely with the Indian Ocean Commission and the EU, uh, because they have together an important role, in, uh, particularly the Indian Ocean Commission, they have an important role to bring together the member states of the Indian Ocean region and ensure that we actually also foster a regional approach to disaster risk reduction, not just a national one, uh, considering the interconnectedness of these disasters. So uh, my office, UNDRR, I look forward to working closely with national institutions and stakeholders working on disaster risk reduction in the region, such as the UN system, the Red Cross, and many others. So I'm hoping that we, together we can really make great progress to build the resilience of member states in the Indian Ocean uh, uh, region. Let me end by just thanking all the participants and of course the generous funding of the EU for their support. And I look forward to fruitful discussions to advance disaster risk reduction in Benin and at the national level in cooperation, in partnership with the Indian Ocean Commission and the member states concerned. Thank you very much uh, all. Amelie, I hand over back to you. Thank you so much, Mr. Basha, for initiating this formal launch of these four-year programs that you mentioned, and to, to give us also the, the deeper meaning and intention of this project, um, tackling the cascading effect of disasters, the systemic um, challenges, and uh, with the objective of, of, of releasing the burden on, on all these uh, island countries um, that represent disasters so that they can achieve their development goals. 
of course, reducing the disaster related losses. So um, now I, I would like to hear from uh, Mr. Massimiliano Messi, the team leader um, at uh, the EU delegation in Mauritius. So the EU delegation, as uh, mentioned just before, is co-funding this uh, resilience building and disaster response management program for the Indian Ocean. So Mr. Massimiliano Messi, the floor is yours and looking forward to hearing your perspective and your expectations on this program. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you, Amelie. I'm sorry, but I think uh, we have quite internet connection in Mauritius right now, quite a few problems. So I see that my video go come and go. So I hope it will stay on because I'm now speaking. But anyway, thank everybody. Thank you, Roberto, for organizing this meeting. I would like to thank uh, Mr. Amjad Abasha for his introductory words, the representative of the UN on disaster reduction. Thank you very much. Uh, bonjour, Gina. Uh, she is also here in Mauritius with me, and I would like to introduce to you also my colleagues and a real mind behind this project, uh, Stéphane Bruguet, who is, uh, who is really the, the, the implementing partner, the most important at uh, the European Union delegation. I would like to greet all the representatives from disaster risk reduction, uh, national disaster risk reduction agencies in the region, from Madagascar, uh, the Comor, Seychelles and Mauritius, of course, and thank you very much for being here. I know that there should be also some colleagues from uh, meteorological agencies, which is very important because we know that major, the main risks in the region, as we said, come from uh, cyclones and natural disasters. But we should never forget that you know man-made disasters can make even bigger uh, damages to the environment, to the population, and be as as serious as as uh, natural disasters can be. So I'm confident that this project, uh, in cooperation with the UNDRR, the IOC, but also La Pirua, will, will make all, uh, all of us able to better respond to any kind of, uh, of, of uh, natural disaster. Uh, I think uh, it was already said, the need to strengthen policy and strategic framework and operational capacities in the region for disaster preparedness and response management is established and everybody agrees on that. Cyclone season yet again, as shown, I mean, this year has been particularly dramatic, also for Mauritius, where in the last five, 10 years, we didn't have very big uh, phenomena, but this year it was, it was extremely heavy. And we know that unfortunately, this tendency is going to, uh, to go in the same direction and things will get worse uh, with the time. Um, I think um, this, uh, this pr program, and I mean, and the opportunity today is there because we really know that uh, national and regional responses must be updated, must be kept up to date for, for the, the countries to be able to respond. And our program came uh, on the, under the previous EDF funding with the IOC. Uh, despite being quite modest in terms of budget, we think it will be an important first step uh, to support the region in building capacity and, and gradually constructing uh, interventions that should be uh, more ambitious in the future. It is therefore important today to really focus on actions, on few core actions that can make a difference in the next four years. Uh, the actions carried out by UNDRR under this program in collaboration with our partners should allow for the development and support implementation of action plans that should be agreed altogether and should be able to bring every uh, national disaster risk reduction uh, agency to be able to respond better and improve uh, the environment and uh, the response, but also the capacity of having good regulations and governance. The work we initiated, uh, we initiated today with this workshop is not only here to explain to everybody uh, what this program can do for you, but also what you can do for the program. Uh, we believe that uh, we need to really to conduce uh, uh, to conducive thinking and to to agree to be able to agree on a set predefined number of areas, actions that can really bring a different added value uh, to be able to improve the effectiveness of your response and the efficiency of national system because we really know that resources are also very important. So thank you very much for all who are around the table. I wish. This in, in, can be an interactive seminar. I'm not sure I will be able to stay until the end because I'm not uh, I'm not totally well today. 
But as I said, Stephanie is there. Most importantly, the staff of the UNDRR are there and uh, will guide your, your intervention and your request and defining these actions, which is really important. I wish that all the participants can take the floor and would like to express themselves in terms of needs and experiences of uh, what is needed. Thank you very much. The European Union is there for supporting you. The IUC, you know as well, and we have the best expertise around the table. So let's hope this is this will be a, uh, an important and uh, profitable uh, meeting. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Messi. Very sorry to hear you. You're not feeling well. We wish you um, a, a very fast recovery. And thank you so much for being here. Uh, that that shows the, the your commitment and the commitment of the EU delegation. I um, I love what you said, and how the focus is about actions and few corrections that can make a difference. So that gives us a, a clear um, frame and, and and pathway on on uh, where to move. And um, and you 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 really presented well the spirit of of this event today. You say it's not only what to to um, to explain what the program can do for you, which is one part of the event, but also what you can do for the program. So I would like just to to retake the three key words I heard. It's about capacity, it's about governance, and it's about efficiency. Thank you very much again for um, for these uh, insights and this perspective. Thank you. And um, I would like now to, um, to hear from uh, Ms. Tina Bon, who is project manager, chargée de mission of the Indian Ocean Commission. She's currently leading the implementation of the program at the IOC level. So Ms. Tina Bon, could you tell us, give us your, your insights and perspectives? Thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. I'm afraid I will be speaking in French for a change. <laughs> so this will give time for, uh, for everyone to switch over to French. Um, uh, Monsieur le représentant uh, du Bureau des Nations Unies pour la réduction des risques des catastrophes pour la région de l'Afrique, cher Amjad. Mais, uh, Monsieur le représentant de l'Union Européenne um, pour Maurice et, uh, et les Seychelles, uh, Maximiliano. Mesdames, Messieurs les représentants des États membres de la Commission de l'Océan Indien, chers amis et, et chers collègues, c'est un plaisir pour la Commission de l'Océan Indien de participer à cet atelier de lancement des activités du Bureau des Nations Unies pour la réduction des risques des catastrophes qui sera mené dans le cadre du programme de renforcement de, de la résilience et la, gestion, et la gestion de la réponse aux catastrophes dans l'Océan Indien un programme qui s'inscrit euh, dans le cadre de partenariats de, de la COI et l'Union européenne. Ce programme contribue à la mise en œuvre euh, du plan d'action intégré du changement climatique et la réduction des risques des catastrophes de la COI et elle, de, elle devra également apporter un appui au pays dans la mise en œuvre du cadre mondial de la réduction des risques des catastrophes, le cadre Sendai. Cette collaboration avec euh, le, la Nations Unies pour la réduction des risques des catastrophes, vient dans la prolongation d'un partenariat qui a débuté il y a quelques années avec la COI à travers le programme Islands. Une collaboration qui nous a permis de repenser les catastrophes et aborder les, les sujets, les questions de catastrophe dans une, dans une, euh, dans une dimension plus, grand, euh, plus globale et à apporter une approche holistique pour répondre aux questions liées à la gestion des catastrophes. Le secrétariat de la COI se réjouit de cette collaboration et nous espérons poursuivre notre chemin ensemble pour le bien-être de la population de la région. Mesdames, Messieurs, notre région a malheureusement connu des pertes économiques, écologiques et humaines à l'issue des catastrophes liées aux au cyclones les pluies torrentielles, les montées des eaux et parmi d'autres, à savoir également l'échouage de, de Wakashio. Nous avons appris, à travers tous ces événements, nous avons appris euh, et, et répondre à, à répondre aux plusieurs catastrophes. 
nous avons développé les, certaines compétences. Et ici, je pense euh, spécialement à Madagascar et Maurice, qui ont quand même acquis des compétences, euh, malheureusement, à travers ces catastrophes. Et ces, ces compétences et savoirs devaient être partagés au sein de la région. Il est clair que les autres pays, de plus en plus, font face à des défis hors de, 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 la, de la norme. Ces derniers jours, nous avons vu les inondations dans nos villes, les glissements des terrains dans, dans d'autres euh, pays, ainsi que les érosions euh, et les érosions de nos côtes qui sont accentuées. Ceci nous, euh, nous ont mené à revoir notre façon de faire et la nécessité de prévenir les risques des catastrophes et améliorer nos outils d'alerte et, euh, et nos cadres institutionnels. Aujourd'hui, je, je suis particulièrement euh, euh, reconnaissant d'avoir autour de cette, de cette table euh, les, les services de la, météo, de la météorologie de nos États membres, ainsi que certaines personnes issues également du ministère de Finances. Euh, ceci explique la nécessité vraiment de regarder les catastrophes dans une dimension plus large et, et, et aussi la, la, le besoin de voir le lien en tout ce qui se passe dans la région, le lien de renforcement, le renforcement de capacité et aussi ça vient avec un renforcement euh, de, euh, de, euh, de, euh, des moyens pour pouvoir lutter euh, ou bien prévenir tous ces risques. Mesdames et messieurs, je pense que le moment est arrivé pour que nous, nous parlions un peu plus des actions. Nous avons, au cours des années, euh, posé la base. C'est à travers la coopération qu'il existait entre euh, la Nations Unies et nous-mêmes, la, la, la contribution également de, de l'Agence française pour le développement à travers un programme sur la, réduction des, euh, sur la gestion des risques des catastrophes naturelles. Nous avons su poser la base et sur lesquelles, aujourd'hui, ce programme devait bâtir sur l'existant et améliorer les, les outils améliorer la coopération et également améliorer les alertes précoces. C'est un programme qui est, pas, euh, qui est aussi euh, en synergie avec beaucoup d'autres programmes qui sont en cours de, de la mise en œuvre dans cette région et nous devrions bâtir sur, euh, sur, sur tous ces, et capitaliser sur ce, euh, les moyens qui sont mis à disposition pour pouvoir donner un sens plus grand et, 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 et améliorer toutes les alertes précoces au niveau régional. Euh, ça a été dit lors de l'intervention de, de, de Massimiliano, la nécessité que les pays aussi s'engagent. Et là, aujourd'hui, je pense, c'est un appel que nous, nous nous apportons aussi au niveau de la région en disant à nos pays, nous devrions le faire ensemble. Si nous ne mettons pas nos ressources ensemble, ce sera très difficile de pouvoir atteindre nos objectifs. Donc, la nécessité aujourd'hui de... Euh, de mettre euh, à disposition nos compétences, nos savoirs et, et, notre, euh, et les moyens que nous avons pour pouvoir lutter ensemble, euh, améliorer la capacité de la région, éviter les pertes, des, euh, les pertes qui, qui sont faites à travers les, les catastrophes et améliorer tout ce qui est alerte précoce. Je ne vais pas trop m'attarder sur, euh, euh, sur ces mots ce matin. Je vais céder la place aux travaux de la journée parce que je pense qu'il y, y en aura beaucoup de choses à discuter ensemble. Il y aura beaucoup de questions à répondre euh, ensemble et, et, et aussi bâtir l'avenir ensemble. La COI, nous venons euh, également, euh, nous venons tout juste de signer notre accord avec l'Union européenne pour les actions qui devraient être menées au niveau de de notre secrétariat pour améliorer la coordination entre, entre les acteurs. Et aujourd'hui, je pense qu'on est bien dans, dans notre rôle en tant que facilitateur. Nous avons su amener au niveau de cette région les partenaires qui peuvent aussi travailler pour et œuvrer pour la région. Aujourd'hui, on parle de, euh, de Nations unies, mais nous avons aussi la PIROI au niveau de la région qui apporte leur édifice. À, 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 à tout ce que nous sommes en train de faire. Il y a beaucoup d'autres acteurs qui sont présents et nous devrions pouvoir travailler ensemble et bâtir cet avenir pour la région, euh, protéger nos populations, protéger nos ressources et protéger notre économie ensemble. Avec ces petits mots, mes, mesdames, messieurs, je vous remercie. Merci beaucoup, euh... 
Madame Bonne, pour, pour ces mots, c'est cette, cette invitation, cet appel à bâtir cet avenir, à protéger nos populations, nos économies, nos écosystèmes. Vous avez parlé de, de, de toute cette dimension régionale, mais en expliquant comment la région appuie les gouvernements, mais en appelant aussi un engagement des gouvernements, bien sûr pour leur propre pays, mais aussi pour contribuer à la région. Vous nous avez mentionné comme euh, bah, les catastrophes euh, nous, nous offre aussi une opportunité d'apprentissage et qu'on a démontré qu'il y a un certain nombre de pays dans, dans la région qui, 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 qui ont tellement souffert des catastrophes, mais ont mis tellement d'efforts, qu on, qui ont des acquis maintenant à partager, un savoir-faire à partager avec les autres pays. Et vous nous invitez à repenser les catastrophes d'une façon plus globale, plus holistique, avec des partenariats plus larges, en, en, en invitant et en travaillant avec des ministères, par exemple le ministère de la Finance. Et, et, euh, et je finirai avec ce mot quand vous nous, disiez, vous nous dites « le moment est arrivé de parler des actions ». Donc, euh, rentrons en action, effectivement, euh, dans l'atelier dans et, euh, et voyons comment nous allons… Euh, implémenter ce programme ensemble et quelles sont les idées et les, les synergies. Euh, un mot que vous avez beaucoup utilisé, Madame Bonne, les synergies que nous pouvons commencer à stimuler lors de cet atelier. Merci beaucoup encore à, à nos trois, euh, nos trois euh, speakers de, de ce début de matinée qui nous ont motivés, qui nous ont donné un cadre. Et, et maintenant, à nous de nous mettre au travail. Alors, je vais rentrer dans les, les housekeeping. So I'm going to shift to English. <laughs> so I don't speak half French, half English. So basic rules, rename yourself. So you know, I think we're all familiar, but not always. Some of us use other platforms than Zoom. So you can click on the three little dots um, up there and rename yourself. So write your name and your organization. Uh, sometimes, you know, we have this iPod uh, or iPad uh, thing. So, so please put a name and, and the organization so we can refer to you more easily. The second thing uh, is muting your mic when you're not speaking. And uh, don't hesitate, please. It's, it's, a, it's a workshop. No, it's a working session. So it's uh, really something that is meant to be interactive. Put your question, uh, tap your questions in the chat, raise your hands, you know, down there, uh, you have um, this little smiley that, uh, that says reactions. So here you can applaud, you can love, you can, uh, you can raise your hands, lower your hands, lots of things. So, so please, um, the success of this uh, and the objective that uh, we, we hold for this meeting will be achieved only with the participation of, of all of us. So talking about this, uh, this meeting, we have two sessions in uh, this meeting. First part is, is, is uh, the part we, we are in, it's meet and greet. No? Um, then we'll um, get into the introduction of this UNDR component in the context of the RDR um, IO program. Little break. And it's not because we're online that we have to, to, to do everything without breathing, but it's also then we are going to get into a smaller group um, where we're going to, um, so first we're going to introduce each other because that's going to be more like, um, uh, yes, a working group. We're going to get some updates from all of you, member states, on your national GR structures and strategies. Where are you at this moment? Then we'll have various, a couple of uh, round tables one about tailoring the approach to the needs of the member states. So what are your needs? What is the approach and how do we create that fit, that match? So you will be, member states and partners will be divided in groups by country. We'll bring some together on the development and implementation of key activities, including action plans. Then the second round table will be about implementation modalities. So there will be a presentation by UNDRR or what are the proposed implementation mo mo modalities and then discussion with you partners and member states. Then we'll, uh, we'll end by some conclusions, little wrap up and especially look at the way forward. So I hear you have um, a link in the chat. So we're going to do a little survey, little survey. 
Um, so please, uh, is it, I, I, I can't see the, um, the chat or, or can you, um, can we have the link to Slido in the chat? Please, yes, here, here you see, um, so you, you click on it, then we'll have two questions for you. So click on it, please um, write something in the chat if you're having difficulties. And we'll ask you, but just something really spontaneous, really natural to, to, to get the sense of, um, of what we're talking. What is the first word that comes to your mind when you think about disaster risk reduction? So can we see maybe the, um, the survey on the, on the main screen? You have the link, so you click on the link, get into the app and answer this question. What is the first word that comes to your mind when you think about disaster risk reduction? Okay, you see you enter your word, off send. Please don't, don't hesitate if you have any issue, you write in the chat. Risk governance. Aha, uh -huh, what do we have here? Reduce vulnerability strategy, natural hazards, coordinated preparedness, uh -huh, forecast, preparation, safety, reduction of vulnerability, prevenir au préalable, reduce vulnerability, opportunity, yes, cost of damage, how to mitigate impact, resilience, disaster, <laughs> yeah, how to mitigate, yeah, that I've read. Refugees, yes, very important. Preparation, legislation, future, yeah. Forecast, challenge, yeah. Okay, communities, people, so important, no? And, and I remember Madame, um, Miss Bonn was mentioning that during her, her talk, no, it's, it's about the, the, the well-being of people. Now, sometimes we get, we can get into, uh, really technological or technical thing and, and it's good to remember why we do all that. Why is disaster risk reduction for, for people? Resilience, disaster is the, the two words that have been more um, mentioned. Okay, thank you. Ah, we have more prevention, early warning, standards. Yes, standards. Standards and, and and I think it's um, the idea of also of, of uh, such a project and working together at the regional level with a more global and holistic approach is also that we we align and we learn from each other so that we can have minimum standards in what we do. Le bien. Mm. Okay. Identification. Action, action. So what we've heard a lot no, in the introductory part of, of this, uh, this project, and that's so good because what is needed is action indeed. Beautiful. So second question. Among, I mean, which other is your country most affected, would you say? So cyclone, tsunami, droughts, epidemics, oil spills, coastal floods, what, what would you say is your country most affected by? So we get a sense also of um, what are the issues for the other countries we are working with today? Cyclones, droughts, coastal floods. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oil spills, epidemics, tsunami. Yeah. But the most, yeah, cyclones. I mean, we we in uh, into the season also, so we 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 really experiencing it um, directly. Droughts, coastal floods. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. So that gives us. Uh, we see also some added. Um, the, the synergies not already on, on, on the topics and, and what is of um, our concern. 
I would like now um, to give the floor to Mr. Roberto Cianolo Moriello, who is the program management officer of UNGR Regional Office for Africa, um, also coordinating this uh, project component. He's going to um, present the objectives, the activities, the timeline. I mean, you're going, we're going really to dive into the um, UNGR component of this project. Roberto, the floor is yours. Thank, thank you. you very much, Amelie. And thank you so much for uh, all the, uh, the, the, the speaker for raising the important points that uh, we will be unpacking with this presentation. I think it's, uh, it's fantastic to hear that uh, many of the words that are in the, in the project resonate um, very much with the activities that, uh, that we're going to implement. And uh, let me also just say that uh, this, this presentation will definitely benefit from comments from uh, member states and, uh, and that will be the, the next session to even unpack uh, more uh, those activities um, just after, after my presentation. Next slide, please. Just to say, a recent study uh, conducted by the IOC Commission has uh, identified uh, the main issues that, um, that uh, basically we can, uh, that are pertaining to the disaster risk reduction and climate change adaptation. Among those, there are uh, weaknesses in, and gaps in institutional and operational capacity on disaster risk reduction, lack of financial and technical capacity to address DRR, and then uh, also deficiencies in information systems and, and data. Uh, we have seen also in the, um, in the survey that, uh, the, uh, I mean, uh, for example, uh, what, what do you think about when you think about disaster risk reduction? And of course, there are uh, many people who have said institutional governance um, and also financial capacity. And uh, of course, risk information is very key. Next slide, please. Just to give you an overall uh, picture of the of the program of the RDRM program and where the UNDRR component fits under this overall program, let me just um, mention that uh, the RDRM program uh, is uh, objective is to reduce disaster and climate related losses in the human, economic, social, physical, and environmental assets of IUC member states. The RDRM uh, program is targeting mainly two strategic objectives. The first one, which is the one we are presenting today that is uh, going to be implemented by UNDRR, which is improving the disaster risk reduction understanding and governance capacities of the island states. And the second one, which is strengthened response capacities of the Indian Ocean region to disaster risk, which is implemented by PIWA and IOC. Um, the project period has started in 2021, the, the program period started in 2021 and will be carried out until 2025. Next slide, please. So the UNDRR component um, has mainly two strategic uh, objectives uh, that are um, linked to it. The first one is about improving the national institutional and operational preparedness on DRR. And the second one is assessing, improving, and developing national policies and regulatory frameworks for uh, disaster risk reduction. The first year of implementation and the activities that are already ongoing um, are the following ones. So the kickoff meeting, which has uh, just started, uh, to, I mean, which we are doing today. Um, ongoing, of course, there is the hiring of regional and national personnel that uh, is going to be deployed in the, the national, um, uh, in the different island states. Uh, of course, there are ongoing virtual and in-person consultations, and um, also there are uh, we are conducting a review and mapping of institutional arrangements and also the responsibilities in the four targeted countries. Next slide, please. So just to unpack uh, those two main objectives, the first one, which is improving the national and uh, improving the national institutional and operational preparedness. Let me go to the next slide, please. Okay, the first activity of, uh, of the project implemented by UNDRR is review the national institutional and operational response capacity on DRR of the National Disaster Management Institutions. Under this activity, which has started already in 2022 and will be carried out until 2023, we have the two days meeting, the launch of the, of the, the project. And of course, um, which also has the main objective to agree with the, uh, the, um, with the member states on the, on the work plan, on the, um, on the upcoming activities and how best to implement them. 
according to the needs identified. The second component uh, of, um, of, of the whole uh, of these activities, review and mapping of institutional arrangements and responsibilities in the four targeted countries. This has been conducted uh, um, through desk research, but also through virtual and in-person consultations, which um, we are going to also discuss about uh, later on uh, for a um, uh, dedicated in-country mission. The third activity is related to initiate consultations and needs analysis for deve the development of action plans, as we have heard um, from the, uh, the, the, the speakers and the opening uh, part. Um, this is one of the major component of, uh, of this project, and this is also very much uh, the, what we has identified as need in terms of developing and implementing the action plans. How this is going to be done is uh, through uh, surveys and uh, key informal interviews, as well as uh, prioritization exercise, one of which will be done later today. As well, finally, we have uh, the activity that is related to peer reviews, and uh, um, UNDRR is going to mobilize experts that will um, inform and uh, the, the, the best the recommendations from our side, uh, in particular uh, experts from the Caribbean that um, linking to our office in the Caribbean and, uh, um, and um, uh, Americas. Uh, and also uh, through the European Union Civil Protection Prevention and Preparedness Advisory Missions. Next slide, please. The second activity links to uh, assessing the institutional response procedures in the four countries to strengthen the multi-sectoral coordination. This activity is also going to be implemented 2022 to 2023, and it envisages the mapping and analysis of sectoral procedures for disaster response and coordination mechanisms, um, which is going to be uh, carried out through lessons learned from the previous disasters, for example, identifying the priority sectors to be um, um, with national counterparts that will be uh, mainly where we will be mainly focusing on. And then also coordination uh, and understanding the main coordination mechanisms in place. And this activity will be also uh, be, uh, carried out through uh, in coordination with the La Pierre. Um, the second activity here is consultation with each country on the institutional response procedures. Um, this activity will be mainly done through uh, I mean, assessments of the procedures and also the multi-sectoral coordination, um, uh, for example, through uh, orientation exercises. And uh, also um, uh, this information will be, uh, will be used for uh, providing recommendations and advocating for improving institutional response procedures through the action plans. Uh, the third activity is uh, clarifying stakeholders' roles, including the civil society and civil military coordination, which is going to be done in 2023. Um, uh, UNDRR is envisaging a regional workshop uh, that is um, aiming to look at the RR stakeholders' roles and mechanisms to implement the RR strategies and action plans. Next slide, please. The fourth uh, activity is uh, looking at uh, assessing the level of funding. We have, uh, we have been hearing a lot about, about the need for resources, in particular for preparedness and also the capacity of the civil protection and uh, how to best mobilize the civil society. Uh, 2022 to 2023. The first item would be analysis of domestic and international resources that are used mainly for prevention preparedness and capacity development in the four targeted countries. Uh, one of which, um, uh, one of the possible uh, activity that could be done is through a risk sensitive budget review to identify the, uh, the main resources available in the country and also what is coming for, uh, from official development assistance, for example. Where relevant, there is going to be also the um, uh, finalization of the DR action plans. I say were relevant because, of, for example, in Mauritius, the action plan has already been finalized. Um, and this activity will be mainly uh, support in defining implementation modalities, monitoring of the, uh, what has been identified in the action plan, and also identifying the funding requirements for those activities. UNDRR, um, as part of this project, will need to prioritize at least one capacity development action per country that we're going to discuss later um, uh, with you today. And the capacity development activities will be, of course, uh, uh, will be identified together with the national counterparts. Next slide, please. 
The uh, fifth activity is to improve disaster risk database management and geospatial information to enhance sharing of information and also meteorological observations uh, and forecasts, as we have heard also from uh, the Indian Ocean Commission, the need to bring um, also the meteorological offices. The first activity is related to updating the national disaster loss databases. Um, one um, uh, methodology that UNDR has been using over the years is Desinventar, but also uh, uh, there are ongoing uh, other uh, disaster loss data information systems, such as in Mauritius, the disaster information management system and this activity will be aiming to update those information second activity is review existing risk information and support uh, the, um, provided for the sharing of existing data and information which is going to be done through desk research country level workshops as well as uh, integrating for example those information into the IOC regional portal for climate change and of course, regional workshop to foster connectivity and coordination across these databases to support impact-based forecasting. Final activity under this uh, main uh, objective is to uh, the production and use of key risk information based on the priorities agreed in the action plans. Um, uh, for example, uh, how to best support in disaster-related statistics through uh, SFM or through this inventor. Um, but also uh, how can we best use risk information for, that is relevant for drought in the case of Madagascar. Next slide, please. The sixth activity is assessment uh, of early warning system and their efficacy, rich countrywide coverage uh, by advising on investments in equipment and human capacities and by proposing national communication protocols in emergency situations. Here we have uh, mainly the assessment uh, of early warning uh, system protocols, human resources, so the needs, the equipment uh, that is going to be needed um, in the IOC region. Um, and this uh, activity, just to mention that links very very much with the activity that is carried out by the IOC and La Labiwa through uh, providing recommendations on the kind of uh, the resources needed and the equipment, but it does not include the uh, purchasing of equipment, for example. Uh, this is going to be done through the um, uh, identification of technical partners uh, internationally recognized in this field. Uh, of course, uh, also simulation exercises that uh, will uh, shed light on early warning system uh, standard operating procedures and, uh, um, and then the elaboration of lessons learned documents and assessments of the national and subnational early warning systems. Uh, of course, this activity, as uh, um, said, the, um, is linked to the Adromet project. Uh, as said uh, by Gina, uh, there are uh, ongoing activities in the IOC, and uh, it is, of course, in the main uh, objective of UNDRAC to link as much as possible with the other activities. Next slide, please. Um, the last uh, activity under these uh, strategic objective is uh, mainly uh, related to disaster risk reduction communication and sensitization strategy. Uh, we have the development of a, commu uh, a communication and sensitization strategy, and also we are planning to build on the synergies that UNDRR Public Broadcast Union project has already um, uh, done uh, in Madagascar, for example, um, and here we have uh, the three main contributions of public broadcast unions uh, in disaster risk reduction. And of course, building synergies with the, the ongoing activities in terms of communication and, and advocacy that LAPIOA is carrying out. Next slide, please. So this, the other strategic objective, just to, um, just to remind everybody, is related to the national policies and regulatory framework on disaster uh, risk management, uh, which needs to be assessed and improved and developed. Under this activity, we have two main subcomponents. The first one being undertake a review of each country's national DRR system, uh, basically the national DRR policy strategies, action plan, and regulatory frameworks. Uh, this is going to be done over the three years, 2022, 2023, and 2024. Here we have uh, as a first item, the resilience policy landscape analysis for the four countries, which is not uh, about reinventing the wheel and, and, and creating a new study. It's about building upon the studies already produced by CADRI, by the IFRC with the disaster law program and others. Um, there is going to be a virtual workshop on the status of implementation of DRR policies, uh, which we identified as a dialogue and peer learning exercise. 
revision of regulatory frameworks for the four targeted countries, which we uh, uh, will need to be identified through consultations with member states. And then there is going to be the uh, economic um, component, which is basically looking at what are the, uh, how are decisions made in terms of investing in the RR? What are the kind of appraisal mechanisms that, um, that uh, are um, basically used? Uh, for example, um, is there any um, analysis of costs and benefits before investing in mitigation or prevention measures? Um, how is this uh, information being used? And also, in where needed, uh, uh, basically, we will have capacity development activities just to uh, inform uh, more on how to best use those tools, such as cost benefit analysis or others, uh, and budget tagging and tracking to identify resources. Next slide, please. Uh, the last activity is about proposing amendment to the national regulatory frameworks on DRR. Here is 2023 and 2024. Um, the proposed amendment um, are uh, related to national regulatory frameworks. For example, in Mauritius, it has been identified already the National Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Act, Act which uh, will, might require some updates, and then also produce an overview of existing risk information and its institutionalization, uh, which is uh, linked to the activity I was mentioning before, uh, the fifth activity. Um, this activity is related to supporting the amendments to national regulatory framework, which are relevant for the institutionalization, uh, but also the production, dissemination and use of quality data and risk information. This is the last activity, uh, and I want to just move now to what is going to happen uh, in terms of the next steps over the course of this year, briefly, and then open to, uh, to our questions. So the ongoing and future activities, uh, as you can see, this is uh, the second, 22nd of March today, regional uh, virtual kick of meeting. The next activity that we have foreseen is the cadre mission in Madagascar, where um, we are going, uh, UNDRI is going to be present uh, through my colleague, uh, Orian Denini Lupo. And uh, the, there is going to be um, a um, mission in Mauritius, uh, tentative as the week, the, the first week, the 11th of April, the week of the 11th of April, to uh, best um, identify what are the indicators um, that are uh, related to uh, assessing the effectiveness of multi-hazard early warning systems, which I, I will discuss with my Mauritius colleague. Uh, in April, there is going to be the steering committee um, of the uh, RDRM uh, program, um, uh, and basically will uh, we'll, um, embed all the different components of the overall program. April, May, we are planning to have national virtual consultations with key stakeholders to follow up on the actions that we have agreed or we have discussed today. And then we have for quarterly two and quarterly three recruitment process of national staff and consultants to support the implementation. Uh, same period in country missions to meet the partners and refine priority actions. In May 2022, we have the uh, global platform for disaster risk reduction, which is in Bali this year, and we have invited uh, many of uh, the uh, focal points from uh, the uh, island states. And then uh, quarterly two to quarterly four, mapping and analysis of institutional arrangements, which is ongoing and also mapping of analysis of regulatory frameworks linked to the RR, and then finally also the updating of national disaster loss databases and the use of loss data. With this, I would like to conclude, but obviously uh, I'm happy to take any questions and, and uh, we can continue also in the next uh, session with more in detail discussion. But just uh, for you to know, uh, for any additional question that uh, you might have, you can uh, just uh, write an email to either myself or my colleague, Orian Deni Lupo at those uh, links. Uh, just to say that um, the main uh, implementing partners uh, will be definitely uh, very much engaged with us in, uh, in uh, many of these components. So just uh, to reiterate that La 